Well, hello, ladies and gents, and welcome back once again to Andy Menkham's Garage. Today is a very, very exciting day because we're going to be fitting a bunch of SW Motec gear. And in this load bearing episode, we're going to be fitting these Urban ABS hard panniers to this eagerly waiting Honda CB1000R. Now on a bike with such a beautiful back end as this one, you'd perhaps be forgiven for thinking that the luggage options would be relatively difficult to fit and would probably look a bit clunky and ugly once they're on. But luckily, SW Motec, as always, have got us covered with the Urban ABS hard panniers and the SLC frame system. Because quite simply put, this little bracket sticks up on here, I mean, obviously there's, there's some framework there, but it's nothing massive. It's not hanging into the wheel. It's not blocking anything off. And then thanks to these clippy mounty jobbies on the back here, the whole thing clips together. So let's get this onto the bike. Then we can check out the pannier, some of the features it's got once it's mounted onto the machine. So in our little kit here, we've got the destructions and a bunch of bobbins, screws, spacers, and washers. And so we first of all need to remove this trim bolt at the back here and the two bolts holding the rear foot peg hanger on. All right, there's the bolt out of her back end. She must be feeling very relieved. And then the bolt for the foot peg hangers we take off with a 10 mil socket. Before I go any further, just because I know what I'm like, I'm gonna stick the bubble wrap out of the packaging over that desperately shiny end can, just in case I drop this foot peg when I've undone the bolt. Right, that's the two bolts off and the foot peg hanger. God, that back end looks looks even better without a foot peg hanger on it, doesn't it? Just wide open, little end can instead of that one, and we would really be talking. Yeah, watch this space. I think we're gonna be going in that direction. Now, before we go any further over there, I'm gonna turn my attention to the rack itself because we need to put the fittings onto this according to the instructions before it's on the bike. Although I see no reason why you couldn't put this on the bike and then put the fittings on afterwards when this is held still by the machine. In any case, we're in Germany, so I'm not gonna break any of the rules. Let's just get on with it. So we need, first of all, one of the countersunk black bolts that goes into one of these lovely machined black anodized aluminium bobbins. That is gifted with a nice little dollop of medium strength liquid thread lock. And then it goes into the rearmost threaded hole here. And it's tightened up with eight Newton meters of torque. My torque wrench doesn't go down that low, so I'm gonna use the manual system of doing it till it feels tight without kicking the ass out of it. Click, click, manual torque wrench, never fails. Same again for the next black countersunk bolt, into the bobbin, a little bit of thread lock, and into the lowermost threaded hole, and tighten to eight newton meters. And then for the foremost hole, slightly different setup of the well, ordinary, what was that, it's a pan head, isn't it? Oh, I always forget what they're called. That goes into this little chamfer fronted, recess rear ended, collet thingy and then that goes into the last of these aluminium bobbin jobbies and that goes into the front most sorry the foremost front most foremost forgetting how to speak english i've been here for too long once again eight newton meters of torque click click eight newton meters is practically nothing isn't it and i do believe the reason why this front one is different and stands proud is because this is part of the locking mechanism as these cases are actually lockable once they're on the bike so now we can put this onto the bike so in order to do this we need to take our foot peg back take these two allen headed bolts put a washer on each they then go through the holes in the foot peg and hold them steady through the holes in the, the rack here. And as usual, onto every thread, a little thread lock must fall. Safety matting in place, please. I'm gonna be getting scratches on this thing before it's even seen the street. That's quite faffy. I probably could actually do with a beautiful assistant at this point. So they are seated in the threads, but I'm gonna leave them loose like that because as you get this spacer into the gap here, we can put the bolt in. Bung that through the rack. Throw the spacer on the floor because that's how I roll. Bolt goes all the way through and the spacer seats nicely against the framework there. Well, that fits wonderfully. So that's that one nipped on. Tighten on the front ones. 
and they need to be tightened to 23 newton meters at the front, 14 newton meters at the back. And there we go, that is the rack fitted to the bike and to be honest, I don't think that looks at all bad. It's just, it's so small, isn't it? I mean, as, as pannier racks go, that is pretty svelte. I mean, the old style ones was like a box about this big, wasn't it? So they've done a great job of minimizing the size of that. It doesn't look offensive on the bike. Obviously it takes away a little bit of the lines, but when you get to where you're going, you dump your luggage, your bike isn't going to look hideous. But of course, when you're doing your day-to-day -day commuting or you're doing your weekend scratching or whatever, and you don't want the panties on at all, it's just three bolts. I mean, this is like a 20-minute job, I would say, to get both of this side and the other side replaced or removed, depending on your uh, current needs. Now, obviously fitting this to the other side of the bike is exactly the same as on this side, just everything is flip reversed. So I'm gonna save you the boredom of watching that and I'm gonna do that in my own time. And we can get on with looking at how the boxes actually look when they're fitted onto the bike and how that all works. Here's the bags on the bike, looking pretty tidy, I think. They don't stick out too far to the sides. I mean, thankfully the, the pipe on this bike is pretty low, so it's not really any issues with having to come outside of the pipes. And obviously it's gonna be firing underneath the bag as well, so also no worries about melting your bags. This kind of not quite shiny, not quite matte sort of textured finish is a good look. I think they, they complement the bike pretty well, to be honest. Nice, simple, subtle color, solid black. I like it. Now, before I open the bag up, I'm gonna show you how we take it on and off. So it's now latched onto the, the little bobbins on the rack there, and there's a little lever in here. If we push that down, we can lift the bags forwards and up and it comes off and there we go and there you can see that's the locking mechanism in there just stick them on again line the catches up with the bobbins push down and backwards click and we're on and now the bags are on they are very sturdy that's awesome so when we open the bags it's a pretty cool feature that the bag won't now flop open it'll only go halfway because it's got these clips and things in here which mean that when you're packing the bag at home, and here so that you can see. So when we open this bag up, we can actually undo these clips. Loosen the Velcro. And then you can lay the bag completely flat so that you can pack it on your hotel bed. I just think it's a really nice touch that because of those straps, the bag doesn't flop completely open. And because of this webbing stuff, your things that are loose in here aren't just gonna roll out onto the street. And obviously we've got elasticated, strappy, seat belty jobbies. So you can pack each of the sides separately, but have all of your stuff still accessible to get to. Much easier than having it all stuffed into one bag. And also in the kit, there is a little combination lock. Pop that open. And this in combination with this little jobby in here. This is actually a lock from inside, so you can lock the bag. And this is now completely locked. You can't open it, you can't take the bag off the bike. Now obviously somebody could unzip your bag, come in here and undo that, but that's where the combination lock comes in, because you can stick this through the holes on the zip, and then the bag is now secure. I mean, obviously this isn't a full hard shell pannier. Somebody could potentially still cut the zip and get in, but it's a deterrent. It's something that's gonna slow people down. At the very least, make people look elsewhere. I mean, it's enough that you could leave your stuff on the bike when you go somewhere to have a coffee and not worry that somebody's just gonna really quickly and opportunistically head off with your gear. And what was that code again? I've just noticed as well, actually, there's a handy little pocket in here. Put the lock into. SW Moto really do think of everything. And also this bag has a really nice soft neoprene lining in it. So everything is gonna be very comfortable on its ride. And this lining itself, it seems, is also removable. So if you ever needed to replace your mounting clips or anything, you could do that. And I said removable, it's not actually removable. It is sewed in at the bottom, but at the very least it gives you access to those clips. And incidentally, the lock does actually come included in the kit. You get the bags, the racks, the locks, and finally, a waterproof bag. And this, as is my preferred way, is an internal bag. So for the sake of example, I'm just gonna stuff it full with all of the bubble wrap that the rack was wrapped in. You then seal it by the Velcro tabs at the top. Roll that down. 
put the two clips together and it's actually even shaped the same as the pannier. And then we can secure that in place with the seat belt. So there we go. I mean, obviously this does remove the ability to pack this side completely full because this is going to be taking up the space. There is just one waterproof bag per side. So it's not like you get one bag for each side of each bag. But in any case, that means all of our gear is going to be dry and it's also not going to fall out when we open the cases up. Here we go. So far, I really think these cases get a big fat Andy Man cam thumbs up. I'm quite looking forward to packing them full of stuff and hitting the road. Just need to wait till I can get this machine on the road and then we're going to be able to see them in use. Oh, and also the uh, the tank bag there. That's also an SW Motec bag. That's the Evo Day Pack, but the magnet version for reasons which I'll explain in the video in which we take a closer look at this thing. So there we go then. That is the SW Motec urban ABS pannier kit fitted to the Honda CB1000R. Thank you so very much for watching this video. Thank you also to SW Motec for giving me these bags to stick on the bike, show you how they look, and eventually show you how they work. If you haven't seen them already, check out the rest of the videos where I've stuck a whole bunch of SW Motec onto this bike, including the tank bag, the screen, the hand protectors, the crash bobbins on the axles, engine bars, and even the foot pegs down there, as well as a few more bits which I haven't yet fitted. And obviously, huge thanks to you for your continued support to the channel and for watching this video. I hope it's been entertaining. I hope it's been interesting. I hope it's been maybe a bit of A, a bit of B. If it has, give it a like. If it hasn't, give it a dislike. Either way, if you've got something you want to chat about, leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. I've been Andy Mancam. If you're new to the channel, get yourself subscribed. Tick the little bell to make sure that you can keep up with more videos like this in the future. And obviously very soon, more videos of me riding this fine machine out on the roads. But in any case, keep yourself safe, keep your bike shiny, and I will see you out there. Ta-ra!